Hi, it's Ron Moore here. Welcome to this live video, sort of in the dark, 30 minutes late, on how to build a strong, leverageable, personal brand. If you're listening on the audio, welcome to the audio podcast of how to bring, build a strong, personal brand. So, a personal brand is where you get to leverage your name. Now, it's funny because when you start a business and the business is all about you, it's probably the worst thing to do to have your business called, uh, you know, Rob's Red Roses Limited. Because <laughs> um, if you name the business around you, your name, you can't scale it. Now, in the old days, it was father and son and, you know, Rob and sons, um, because it was expected that a person would own a small business, that small business would go on to their family. But the world's a different place now. Now, one of the things we kind of accidentally did well when we set up Progressive Property is we called it Progressive Property. Because if we'd have called it Rob Moore and Mark Homer Properties, five years ago, we wouldn't have been able to step back, scale up. We have 145 trainers now. We, our businesses do tens of millions of pounds. And we'd have still been a two-man band and a few staff. We'd have had to do all of our um, training. We'd have had to do everything and be everywhere. Um, so it didn't give us the ability to scale. So I'm going to kind of split this into two. I've got eight points I want to share with you. Oh, wow, I get quite a few more people tuning in live in the evenings. Um, I was half an hour late because I'd gone to bed. I never do live feeds at this time of night, but everyone's asking me to, so I am. Um, Sam, thanks for messaging me because if it wasn't for you, um, I still would have been in bed watching Netflix. Anyway, so if you're setting up your company and you're starting your company, call your company something not your name and separate your name as your brand. I mean, the world is very different now with social media and a personal brand is so much more leverageable and scalable. And also it's a separate asset to your business. So, um, you know, I'm going to cover on point two, setting up all the media, but just to get this out the way, because everyone will ask me anyway, have a separate profile on Facebook for you when you're at uni with your pants around your ankles spewing up everywhere and all your mates where there's banter and all that. That's like very separate. Then you set up a personal profile or page um, that's, you know, you, friends, everyone else. And then you set up a business page. And, you know, my business page is the one you're watching this live feed video from. Um, it's called Rob More Progressive. It's me. It's my official business page. You also then, if your company has a name and you have a company, you want your company page. So Progressive Property has its page. It's about 50,000 likes or something like that. Um, and you'll want your own personal website, robmore.com. Uh, and you'll want your business website, progressiveproperty.co.uk. Um, so, you know, it might seem like a bit of a juggling around at first, but it's, it's important to split these and I'll tell you why. All right. So uh, let's go through now building your personal brand. So first off, why would you want to build a personal brand? Well, number one is it's a separate asset to your company. So if something happens to your company or one day you want to sell your company or you're disillusioned or you want to scale or leverage. Um, then you still have another asset. You have something you can do immediately. Now, if you're selling your company you know, to a, a private equity firm and they've got some kind of restrictive clause on you being able to be in property for the next two years. So let's say I sell progressive property for 60, 70 million quid. And they, they wouldn't want me, they wouldn't let me do any other property training or speaking or business related stuff for probably two years or maybe five years. But if I've got my own personal brand where I write life leverage and I write money and I've got my own followers on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, etc. As long as I'm not promoting property stuff on there, according to my sale contract, I can free, freely express myself. I can write new books. I, so you've got this freedom in business. Uh, and also, if you own a company, and I'm just using Progressive Property as an example, but could, can name, send me some of your, tell me some of your company names on this live video, so at least I can keep using my company. But um, if you're using Progressive Property, you can't teach people about investing in watches, which I love to do, investing in classic cars, like I interviewed Quentin Wilson from Top Gear, and, and all these other things that you're interested in, that you love to do. If you start talking about that to your property clients, customers, um, subscribers, they're going to be like, well, this is nothing to do with it. Whereas you can freely express this, this, you know, on your own personal brand because it's your personal brand. So you can say and do whatever you want. Now, of course, 
if you're really well known for something and you go and do something different, if you hear me talking about colonic irrigation, spiritual, barefoot retreats in Bali, you know I'm probably on some kind of ayahuasca crazy ass drug. Because um, that would very much be a disconnect. When you see me meditating 14 hours a day, you know I've lost the plot. But I could still test and play with this. I mean, you know, there are many personal brands that, that do that, talk about a lot of the stuff that they're doing. Because the people that follow you are interested in you. Yeah, of course they're interested in what you say and probably found you based on s- some specific niche. Like you might have found, found me with a disruptive entrepreneur or life leverage or money. Um, but, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm able to express my interests or the things that I think you're going to be interested in if they're slightly out of that exact niche because you follow me and hopefully you like my work. You're going to like the work of the people you follow. People are going to like your work. OK, so let's go through those eight points then. Um, actually, just before I do, um, I, I believe one of the Jenners made £450 million on Instagram. I heard that somewhere uh, very recently. Um, and Dwayne Johnson, who's got millions of followers on his social media, uh, obviously Siri have just done an, an advert with him. Uh, and Gary Vaynerchuk, who's quite very well known on social media, he's just done a, a joint venture with K-Swiss. Uh, and, and, and social media profiles, whether that's YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or whatever, they have a value. And that's why I think you should build your own personal brand. They have an actual value. Like this, my podcast now could make thousands of pounds, maybe tens of thousands of pounds, I don't know on um, sponsorship ads. Now, I don't sell sponsorship ads on it. And by the way, if I do, it just means they pay me loads of money and I couldn't turn it down. But I've never sold sponsorship ads because I don't need to, because I don't, have, I don't need the money because I've got income streams. I don't have to make this my monetary thing. But it, it has enough subscribers, you know, more than a million, millions of downloads in 178 countries now, such that people who want to get their um, message of their company or their marketing out there could leverage my podcast. And so it is with some of these major influencers. There's loads of influencers um, who've got millions of followers in all these different niches that people can put ads before their videos on YouTube or they can endorse. Um, I believe uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, um, last time I did some research for Life Leverage, so this is 18 months ago, got €295,000 for an endorsed tweet. You know, if he puts a picture of of his Adidas football boots or whatever. And many well-known celebrities who weren't, aren't necessarily up there are 60 or 80,000 pounds a tweet, you know, an endorsement. If you follow Roy McElroy, he has Rolex and he has Bose. Um, and, you know, he'll put a little picture up of stuff or he'll do a giveaway. And, of course, it'll get 20 or 30,000 shares. And he'll get paid a serious amount of money for that. In fact, um, he may get a sponsorship deal for Nike worth something like 100 million. And part of that sponsorship deal will be leveraging your social media platforms. Now, I'm not saying you set them up just to do that, but that's what will come to you as you grow. Okay, so these eight points then I think are really valuable to think about building your personal brand. Um, Ask me any questions at any time, fire away. All right, so number one, I think it's important that you're clear on how you want to be known. Because if you just do live feed videos, by the way, if you haven't done live feed videos and you haven't got your platforms set up, you should just go and do them. So what I'm about to tell you, I'm, now, I'm then going to go back on and tell you why that's not necessarily the best advice if you're just starting out. So I'm going to contradict myself here, but bear with me. I won't on the other seven. So when you're building your personal brand, how do you want to be known? So we spent quite a few months looking at my personality, my values, how other people perceive me, my customers, my staff, my business partner, my family. We brainstormed lots of words and phrases and values. And after maybe six months, we came up with the disruptive entrepreneur. Disruptive was the word. So that was what we chose to be the brand. Of course, my page, I could set up a page called the disruptive entrepreneur, but as I already got assets, um, you know, I think I have 26 or 27,000 followers on Facebook, which for a low, a little Britain in Peterborough, it's a pretty good thing. Um, I did, you know, um, I've got about 2.6 friends in real life. So that's a good thing. Um, so yeah, so we, this is the brand, the disruptive entrepreneur, my name, the disruptive entrepreneur. That's, you know, so like, I could probably do any, I could, as long as I'm disruptive, I could probably talk about most business models. I could probably give you information on investing, on money, on finance, on leverage, as long as it's disrupt, disruptive. If I started getting very technical and analytical and dry and boring and slow, you'd think I'm ill. So um, that was how um, I, we decided, my agent, the other people that were involved, I should be known. 
And therefore, my podcast is called The Disruptive Entrepreneur. There's a Disruptive Entrepreneur website. Um, our values at Progressive are progressive, innovative, and personal. Um, ha- had we um, done our values back then, disruptive might have been one of the words, but progressive and innovative are quite similar to d- disruptive. So you can see there's this sphere of, there's this like fence around um, the specifics of how we want me to be seen by our customers, clients, fans, the, you know, the world in general. Now, if, a, if you just go and spray your stuff out there uh, and just talk about anything and anything and rant about politics and rant about the news and rant about Strictly Come Dancing and rant about whatever, whilst that's fine because you could build a following by being a ranter, uh, you don't really, ha- not really known for anything other than, wait a minute, being a ranter. And if you're a ranter and you're known for ranting about everything, that could even be a brand because it's a consistent theme. But w- where I'm going to contradict myself is, If you don't know what that is yet, fuck it. Get some videos done. Get a camera in your face. Look, you know, the backdrop's not good. I've just do this backdrop because I've got my podcast set up here. It's not perfect. The lighting's not perfect. So what? Get a video camera in front of your face. uh, Do some scripted videos. Do some live videos like this. Take some excerpts of it and put it on Instagram. Start writing some articles on the stuff you're interested in. And get stuff out there. And it's better to get stuff out there and experiment and play and get feedback from your audience with your thumbs ups and smiley faces or your angry faces or, yeah, you know, I really like that article or there was no likes and shares on that article. And then you start saying, OK, well, that kind of content people aren't interested in. But this kind of stuff they love. It's funny, I do not want to be known as a motivational speaker, even though a lot of people call me that. I'm not a motivational speaker. But any time I talk about anything to do with motivation or the look at my podcast analytics with, with, with motivational stuff, it gets the most likes, views, shares, downloads. So, you know, you could just inspire people, motivate people, enthuse people. You could be funny. You could be interesting. Um, Play, because then one day it will become clear to you. But if you spend months trying to know what you need to be known for without getting out there and doing anything about it, then you're just going to waste months. I mean, my podcast has been really good. Thanks for your comments, by the way. I can't comment about the podcast. It's been really good for me in just so many ways. But I should have started it a year ago when I thought about it. Live feeds. I had so many hang-ups about live feeds because my beard looks massive and it makes me look um, a bit bit bulkier and broader than I am. Some cheeky bastard said to me on a live feed video, Wow, Rob, you're looking good. Put on a bit of weight there, haven't you? I thought you you used to be a friend. Um, So I had these hang-ups too. Um, but, you know, I should have done live feed videos a year ago. I saw these people with selfie sticks and walking around with the camera in front of their face. And I thought, what? I'm never doing that shit. And of course, I'm doing that shit. Um, all right. So that's number one. Be clear on how you want to be known. What's your vision? You know, is your vision to create global financial freedom? If it is, then a lot of your stuff should be about money, about leverage, about business, about accountancy practices, about budgeting, all that kind of stuff. All your quotes should be about money, all your visual infographics should be about money bucketing, etc. So you can see, once you've got this vision and your values, i.e. progressive, innovative, personal, for example, then it's really, because a lot of people say to me, I don't know what to post, or I'm uninspired, I haven't got any ideas. But as soon as you know what your niche is, know what your brand is, know what your vision and values are, the content comes through you. It's so obvious. All right, great. What do you stand for and what do you stand against? This is still get being clear on um, you know, how are you know. So I stand for educating yourself. I stand for disrupting. I stand for being an entrepreneur. I stand for uh, creating value and solving problems. I stand for it, it being okay to make money. I stand for leveraging so that you can grow. I stand for building assets that pay passive income. You know, so therefore, I stand against the traditional schooling system around how you're raised about money and how your family raised you about money and the mainstream media where it's all politics and bad news and negativity. So be clear on what you stand for and what you stand against. And again, that comes through your uh, vision and it becomes your brand. OK, what could you do for a long time? So it's, um, James says, I stand so I can go for a walk. Well, mate, you should also be a comedian. <laughs> you did get me to notice, though. Um, so I think it's all... I do see a lot of people doing live feed videos and setting up businesses, and 10 minutes later, they're doing something else, and 10 minutes later, they're doing something else, and 10 minutes later, they're doing something else. So while you're thinking about your brand and your vision, try and think about what you could be doing for a really long time. And um, the way I've managed to not typecast myself too much or... or 
restrict my creativity because I like variety and I like to express myself as I'm sure you do is you could have an umbrella so for example progressive it could be an umbrella for me because progressive can be progressive property progressive assets progressive social media progressive digital marketing agency progressive pants progressive whatever it could be anything uh, and so the disruptive entrepreneur could be anything I could talk about marketing sales finance accountancy you know uh, building a team outsourcing leverage money systems so while you're branding yourself, maybe you could create a brand which, which is an umbrella. So you, because if you're hyper niche in six months, progressive childcare, there you go, progressive dating. I know there's been plenty of people at Progressive Towers that have been getting together, maybe in the toilets. Then there'll be the progressive divorce counselling. Um, yeah, but the reason Abigail said progressive childcare is because if people could bring their kids in there as a crash while we're running our courses, that would solve a lot of people's problems. All right. Great. So that's number one. We've got seven more to go. So I better get on with it. OK, next thing then. This is a logistical, practical one, but I know you logistical, practical people will like it. And it's really important is you need to have all the assets set up. So Snapchat, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, a Facebook group, a Facebook page, a Facebook profile. I've probably missed a couple. Um, set them all up now, like literally in the next week, commit yourself, put your name in the comment below and say, I, Rob, commit to setting up all my social media profiles within one week. Because I remember listening to a podcast about a year ago and I think it may have been Arianna Huffington. It may have been her interviewing someone else. I can't quite remember, uh, but it was a very successful woman and she got like a bit her 15 minutes of fame, as most people are supposed to get. Uh, and apparently she had quite a few million hits on her name over a very short period of time, like, you know, days or less than a week. But because she didn't have all the social media platforms set up, she didn't have a YouTube account, you know, she didn't have a Twitter or Facebook or whatever. Those millions of people that were searching her name that could have opted into her email database for her website and could have followed her on Twitter and, um, and Instagram and Facebook. They all just evaporated into a black hole. And um, I know that there's a lots of lots of platforms I should have set up a lot earlier. And I've had I would have had a much bigger following and fan base and subscriber database had I not. Um, uh, but hey, you know, no point looking back. You know, we, we've got what we've got. We've got 270,000 people that subscribe to us on email. But if I started email marketing 15 years ago and not 11 years ago, we'd have half a million or a million. Um, my, my Facebook, um, there's a little button uh, on your Facebook profile which you can click, which says follow, so that when you get to 5,000 friends, people can still follow you, which means they can see all your stuff. You don't see their stuff in your feed, but they can follow you like, like a page, how you follow a page. Uh, and it's like I didn't get that button turned on for about seven and a half years. Uh, in just a couple of months, I've got three and a half, 4,000 people that follow me, plus the 5,000, that's nine, nearly eight, 9,000. If I had turned that button on six years ago, or whenever they set it up, it might have been two or three years ago, I don't know. But a long time ago, I'd have had a lot more people follow me. But most people, the problem is, over the last five years, they found me and my Facebook friends are maxed and then they just disappear. So that was a massive mistake that this person made, uh, that I also made, that I don't want you to make. Now, what you probably want to do is manage one or two yourself. So I focus on Facebook, as you know. And of course, I repurpose the content sometimes into my podcast. Uh, and then I have a researcher, agent, analyst, virtual assistant, general legend who's been working with me for, what, nine years, something like that. And he'll take the podcast um, and he'll upload it onto the podcast system and he'll maybe transcribe it into a blog or an article or he'll transcribe it into bullet points. And then, then he'll get me to expand it into a more detailed, less kind of nebulous article for SEO purposes. He'll take this video and he'll take one minute excerpt and put it onto Instagram. He'll put the longer version onto YouTube. Um, he might take some quotes out that he thought were good and do an Instagram quote or put them on my quotes on my Facebook page. So you manage one or two of your accounts and then you repurpose all of your content onto all the other accounts so that you're not having to do 15 all yourself. But you want them set up now and also you want them populated. So, you know, you want a, a bit of history. You want a good photo of yourself. You want some posts and articles. and Because, you know, if you go on a social media platform and there's one photo, you just think it's a, you know, a fake profile. So you could then, once you've done all that, consider running ads to grow your um, following. You know, I know some people do ads to join Facebook groups. Some people do ads to um, get likes. So you could consider that. 
but I should th you should do all the free ones first that don't cost you any money. Ah, another one is write a book. Because if you write a book, you're searchable on Amazon. Um, I was talking uh, Inner Circle Mastermind Elite. I have, a, I have a few mentoring programs that I run, and I, Inner Circle Mastermind Elite is one of them. And um, I've written nine books now. And so I see a book as an asset, you know, just like I see a property as an asset. Uh, and so um, once I've written a book, it's there, and it could be there for 10 or 20 years. And as soon as someone searches my name on Google, the books are going to come up on Amazon. They search my name on Amazon, the books come up on Amazon. They search on Amazon, it comes up on Audible, and Audible, it comes up on Amazon. So, I'm, you know, whilst they're not necessarily social media platforms, they're mass media platforms. Uh, and so you want to be searchable and findable on all of them. And then, of course, you can put your bio on Amazon and you can uh, in many of these social media platforms, you can add your other social media platforms. So if they're interested in Instagram, but they found you on Facebook, they can move across. All right. Great. F number three, then, is you must post consistently. And um, I'm not as good at this on Instagram as I could. And I'm, I'm going to commit to you live and you're going to hold me accountable. Three Instagram posts a day. Um, so I'm going to do lots more one minute videos, you know, Instagram's a different style, it's a bit shorter, sharper, punchier, I can be even more disruptive, it'll be different from the kind of content you get here, um, a bit more hard hitting, maybe a bit more blunt, certainly a lot more <laughs> concise, um, but you must post consistently. Now on your Facebook page, um, I would say two, three times a day, on your Facebook profile, I'd say at least once a day. And some people say, oh, well, I haven't got that many followers yet, but you'll keep them engaged if you post regularly. Now, I used to think, whoa, that's way too much. One, I might not have enough to say, but two, aren't people going to just think I'm, you know, annoying them, annoying them? But the thing is, there's so much stuff that comes up and down their feed. If you post once a day, they might not see it because it's gone. They might, if you post twice a day, they might not see it, it's gone. So you might need to throw, post three times a day for them to just see you once. But also, remember that things can get shared. So the more you post, the more reach you get, which is because some people's profiles are set up so that they can see um, posts of other people's posts or friends of friends, depending on their settings. So actually, if you post three times a day, you could get seen a lot more. Now, I also think it's important to vary the style of your posts. So I try to do one video a day. As you know, mostly I do it at 8.30, 8.45 a.m., which is why it surprised a lot of you that I was doing one at 8 p.m., and which is why I didn't do it till 8.30, because I went to bed, because it's not in my normal routine. Um, but then also I'll post a question so that I can get you engaged. Because if I ask you a question and you comment, number one, you're engaged with me, which is good because you want to be engaged with me. You don't want to be a foyer. You want to be part of the process. Uh, but number two is that I'll ensure that my posts carry on being seen in your feeds. Because Facebook, with their algorithm, stuff that doesn't get seen, you'll get seen less. Stuff that gets seen, it'll get seen more. If it gets clicked and shared, it'll get seen more. Have you ever noticed when you've seen someone's page or made a comment, all of a sudden in your feed, it looks like you've got four or five of their comments? Because that's the way the algorithm plays. Um, and, and that's the way it works with your reach and your likes. So, you know, if I've got 26 and a half thousand likes, there's no doubt that a, a bigger percentage of them than not aren't seeing me. So if I ask a question to get you engaged or something that you share, and it brings people out who haven't seen me for a while and they click or they like, then they're going to see a lot more of my stuff. So there's lots of reasons why you should post consistently. And I resisted this for a long while. Quotes, post some good quotes, post some good images. Every now and again, post something funny, post shorter videos, longer videos. You want the variety of content, but you also want some consistency of the time. Like, you know, um, someone messaged me, it was Sam who messaged me at like 8.05 saying, Rob, what's happened? Um, have I missed it the only time I'm on time? Because, one, well, I've mentioned it before, but people know when I post. So it's kind of in there. It's, in the, it's, it's formed a habit. Um, and then it's, and it's much easier then for them to come and view your, um, your work. All right, then. So on Twitter, you could do five, six, seven times a day. Yeah. Uh, on, um, you know, on the shorter platforms, maybe on um, Instagram, you could do more times a day. All right, great. So number four, uh, ask your audience what they want and give it to them. So I think it's really important to involve your audience in your work. Now, there are some social media profilers who have got loads of followers and fans and they post something and they never engage ever. And you know what? If you've got a load of followers and it's virtually impossible to 
I've replied to everyone. I'm, I'm not saying that's wrong. I respect the fact that that's the way they decide to do it. You know, maybe they've had a bad experience in the past or they're, not, they're a bit of an, an introvert and it's not something they'd normally do, so they just do it from a distance and that's okay. But that's not my values because our company values are progressive, innovative, personal. My, you know, brand, the disruptive entrepreneur. I like to be involved in a dialogue with you. One, because I learn as much from you as you learn from me. I learn what content you like and don't. I learn, like, learn what you share and don't. Um, so I learn what next books I should write. I learn what next podcasts I should do, what courses I should do, how I should grow my business, what courses I, courses I should scale, what courses I should reduce, what new business models I should go in, who the good partners are to be. I learn that from interacting with you. So I get as much out of this relationship as, as you do, which is really important. You give me book titles. You give me book subtitles. You tell, you tell me when some of my ideas are shit. You tell me when some of my ideas are good. If you love what I do, you review it. If you hate what I do, you one star it and tell you tell me that you want to boil me in a vat of piss, which is what someone recently said about me. They want to boil me in a vat of piss. Hmm, that's, that's, thank you for your feedback. Have a lovely day. All right, so where are we going with this? Uh, so, yeah, basically, a lot of the time you're probably not sure what content to do. You know, what you've got, maybe you've got a list and you're not sure which one, or you just don't really feel like you have any content. So ask your audience. When they post on your stuff, thank them. Answer their questions. You can't do it with everyone. I get hundreds of messages now a week. So, you know, I, I can't do it with everyone. And sometimes I have to say I can't. Um, or I'll send them to someone else. But I'd say for probably now, 80, 90% of the messages, I'll engage with them. Um, you know, often if I've got to spare half an hour, I'll go and reply on some of your comments. And hey, look, you know, sometime in the future, if I've got something to sell, I rarely, if ever, sell on my personal brand profiles and leave that mostly to my company. Um, but if I have, ever am going to, and I've responded to you personally a few times and messaged you and interacted with you and conversed with you, and I'm a real person, you know I care, you're more likely to buy some of my stuff. So um, this is another reason why I think you should build your personal brand now, because don't worry that you don't have a product to sell yet. In fact, it's better to start your personal brand or scale it without having a product yet, because if you do it when you've got a product, people will just think, oh, well, they're only doing this live feed and this podcast to sell a product. It's so obvious when a new podcast comes out, but all it really wants to do is sell you something. And, you know, and in the end, that podcast is not going to get listened or shared. So if you set it up now and build the fan base and the following and the goodwill and, you know, all the sort of connections on the net, because if you've got 160 podcasts and you've got 160 pages, which hosts the podcast for each episode, you know, and you've got 500 live feed videos, because I've been doing them for years, I must have six or seven. hundred. I mean, I must have 50 or 100 million views now. And there's all these mega celebs bragging about 50 or 100 million views. But most of my videos get 10,000 views and I do a video a day. So I'll probably just be off by volume. Look at me. I've got 100 million views on Facebook. Woohoo! I'm like Coldplay. All right. It was through 10 million videos, but still that, that you're getting the reach and the connection. So it doesn't really matter if your videos don't have a lot of views, because if 10 people see that one and 10 people see that one and 10 people see that one and 10 people see that one, each one gets shared once, you still have that sporadic effect. Of course, it looks great if you've got shit loads of views. But don't worry about it. Get your shit out there. All right. OK. Now, it's also a guaranteed way to get more likes, comments, shares, um, to write good books, to give your market what they want if you ask them what they want. So it's kind of like a simple equation. It's called crowdsourcing. So crowdsource all your ideas. And also, if you're like, oh, I don't know what content to do, or you feel like you've got writers or live feed, video, blog, block, um, then you've, you've always got some content. All right, number five then. How are we doing for time? All right, number five is repurpose your content. I sort of mentioned that briefly before. Don't waste an opportunity when you're giving content to create multiple forms and platforms of it and create more leverage. So, um, you know, the one drawback of doing the podcast here is that you get the same boring backdrop. Maybe I should green screen it. Um, I, 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 when I travel, I do take my podcast gear with me and the backdrop's a bit more interesting. I'll come back to pattern interrupting in a minute or remind me to. Um, but this video, as said, will go on YouTube, excerpts will go on Instagram, the audio will go on the on, uh, podcast, which is on iTunes, and it's on Stitcher, and it might go on SoundCloud. So you repo it could get transcribed, there could be a blog, there could be quotes out of it, you could do mini blogs, you could do an email autoresponder series. You know, like I could cut these eight ways on growing and expanding your personal brand into one, each one could be an email once a week for eight weeks, and I've got an email autoresponder. And the same piece of what will ultimately probably end up being 45, 50 minutes worth of content is now on six or eight different platforms. And it's a great leverage of your time. 
So repurpose your information. What you don't want to do is have to do this piece of content eight times because it's a waste of your time. Now, Ben has said, is, is doing a podcast expensive? Uh, no, it's really cheap. Like, um, I don't know what it is per month to, for the hosting. I know it's less than 100 quid. Uh, and this bearing a C1 microphone, you can get pretty cheap. I bet you could get one for under 50 quid on eBay. I don't know what they are new. My team will tell you this um, Zoom H4N recorder. I bet you could get all the hardware and the pop stop and the cables for less than 150. Uh, and um, no, it's like it's, it's a complete no brainer. There's only 4% of people in the UK that list a podcast. There's 20% America that list a podcast. Podcast is the future. I have more podcast listens and more podcast listeners than most radio stations now, most major radio stations. So, you know, just from me gobbing off in a bearing a C1 and I'm um, sticking it out there. Now, the great thing when you have all these multimedia platforms, so revert to number two, setting up all your multimedia, revert to this one, which is um, repurposing all of your content. Um, now what I can do is when I'm doing a live feed video, I can mention my podcast. When I'm doing a podcast, I can mention my Facebook, Facebook page. When I'm doing Instagram, I can mention my Facebook page and my podcast. On my podcast, I can give you a free report and get you to email to my um, you know, email subscriber database. And you can move your fans and followers and subscribers from one platform to another to grow all the platforms. And also with the social media ones, if you get them to opt into something, you own the data because Facebook and um, iTunes own my customer. You know, you who watch here, I'm, you know, I don't own you, as it were, in that, you know, I don't have your details. Facebook or iTunes have your details. But if you're opted into my emails, I have your details. Uh, and so, you know, you can use this cross-platform marketing to grow your subscriber database or other, other businesses. You can cross, you can be your own competitor and you can be your own collaborator. Like my podcast could joint venture with my property company. Or my Instagram account could joint venture with my Facebook account and cross promote. So, yeah, it's pretty cool, all this stuff. Love it. I hope you all enjoyed it too. Give me a thumb up or a smiley face if you're loving it. Give me an angry face if you think I'm full of shit, whatever. I take all feedback. Uh, all right, number six then is test. If in doubt, test. So if you're worried about quality, whoa, we have a lot of thumbs up and happy faces and smiley faces and a lot of hearts. There's one angry face going across there. I will find you. All right, great. So if in doubt, test. What camera should I use? Test my iPhone. Oh, what podcast gear should I use? Go on eBay and buy a really cheap mic and a really cheap recorder. Test it. What, what should the backdrop drop be? Test it. I've tested in the Range Rover. I've tested in the RS6. I've tested in the Panamera Turbo. I've tested in the Ariel Atom. I've tested in the Ferrari. I've tested on holiday. I've tested in the villas I've stayed in. I've tested loads of places. And in the Ferrari gets the um, best comments. It's generally the best likes. Uh, so test. I've tested content and it's got been really well received. Actually, one of my most well received pieces of content ever uh, on all platforms, because I repurposed it, is talking about depression and, you know, being honest about um, how I felt that way in the past and how a lot of clients I've um, trained over the years or worked with have felt that way, too. And how we all do and analyzing that and normalizing that, etc., so, you know, and I never would have known that. I mean, you know, the disruptive entrepreneur, business, money, you know, you wouldn't have thought to talk about that. Um, but I probably was having a bit of a down day one day. And um, hey, look, at the very least, having all you guys following me and listening to me all over the world, it's therapy for me. Because I get to run my mouth off and blurt it all out and I don't have to pay some guy 500 quid to lay on his couch. And maybe a, a woman would be better to be my um, uh, therapist. Uh, so, yeah, it's, so it's good for you as well. I get lots of my ideas through communicating with you and it comes out and it was stuck in my head and now it's out. So if in doubt, test. Test backdrops, test lighting, test audio, test content, test quotes, test articles. Follow top influencers, look at their work, look at what works and then borrow the strategy. Don't rip them off. Don't nick their stuff. If you're going to nick their stuff, quote it with them. I often, I borrowed some of Brian Tracy's work because he's, you know, I've been mentored by a lot of great people. So KRAs and IGTs, I honour where they came from when I write about them in my books. Because I, you know, I want to I pay homage to the people that have really helped me. I want to thank them and show gratitude. I know Dr. John Demartini is probably half of the business he's getting at the moment and half the books he's selling are thanks to me. Because, but that, you know, the man's really done a lot for me. 
so, you know, why wouldn't I? I'm never going to nick anyone's work. Um, you also, you don't want to nick anyone's work because you want to be unique. So I don't try and be like the Americans. It's not hustle, 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 grind, 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 work 15 hours a day, you fucking loser. You're a fucking loser if you don't work 15 hours a day, you wimp. Don't make any fucking excuses. Do another fucking rap. You know, like that's all the Americans are saying all that kind of shit. If it were that easy, just to work harder, everyone would be rich. So I want to do it a different way, my way. Um, and you should want to do it exactly, Natalie. Be authentic. I've just spent four minutes ranting and I should have just said, be authentic. All right, great. Uh, number seven, then, is joint venture with other influencers. So if you uh, uh, have a database of, say, 5,000 customers, and someone else has a database of 5,000 customers, they promote you, you promote them. If you have a podcast, you can interview people on your podcast, and they promote your podcast. Or you can go and be interviewed on someone else's podcast in your niche. Uh, or um, you can do Facebook videos with other people. So if you watch the big top influencers, whether it's Grant Cardone, Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, um, Ty Lopez, etc., you know, the, the, the ones who've got the million plus following, they'll often do videos with another top influencer. And what will happen is they'll, their subscriber base will grow by 50,000 or 100,000 because followers of each influencer will go across. Now, this is... Not quite as simple as the, uh, you know, the, some of the gurus make it. Um, am I, is this is swearing. I'm getting asked about swearing. We'll come back to that in a minute. Remind me about that. I'll do a Q&A at the end. So, you know, some people say, hey, look, approach all the top influencers and get them to promote your stuff to millions of people. They're not just going to do it unless they've got really good reason or value or your content is amazing and unique, disruptive. Um, but what you can start with is people on your level and it rises you a bit and rises you a bit. And then you find that the people on your level, there's slightly more influencers and higher influencers and higher influencers. So, yeah, so this is like a joint venture or a reciprocal podcast or live feed video or broadcast or do live interviews. So you'll notice um, Sam Brown has um, done a couple of interviews with me and one video got 15,000 views and another video is what probably nearly 10,000 views. So that's like a joint venture because Sam's very well known in the 4N group and she's very active on social media. And of course, I'm known in my circle. So she gets her credibility boosted because a lot more people are seeing her work and she's sort of leveraging, I suppose, off as me as an influencer, if that's a good thing, if you think that's a good thing. Um, and vice versa, I'm leveraging off her influence in the 4N community and everywhere else that she posts. Um, so, you know, that, that's a great thing. And I know she's... Um, you know, she might make a thing of this. She's got another couple of great people lined up to interview, I know. You can't keep promoting me forever, Sam. But, you know, you, yeah, yeah, you're going to have to cheat on me with, um, with maybe my business partner or someone else. Someone asked what 4N is. 4N is a Facebook group that is for networking. They've got about 22,000 members. Um, so, you know, you can join venture. You don't have to join venture with the world's top influencers because you might not be able to reach them because they might be above you. But influences, in, so if people have got a really big Facebook group. Or they've got, you know, maybe they've got a good following on Instagram, but they do something a bit different or they do something very similar to you. And so they might have the biggest following, but they've got a lot of customers who could instantly be your customers. All right. Now, um, what I find is if you want to read, if you want to work with influencers, you have to give them something. You know, just going to them and saying, hey, look, you know, I want you to promote my podcast. I want you to promote my video. I get pitched all the time. And, you know, I do want to help everyone. But if people just approach me like that, I don't know them. I could risk my reputation if I promote someone and they're not that, that credible. I could risk my whole reputation that I've built up over the last 11 years. So I'm not I'm so rare if someone just cold pitches you that you're going to do it. But maybe come on, comment on some of their work. Maybe try and engage with them. Maybe share a lot of their work on social media and tag them in so that you can, they can see that you're giving first using you know, reciprocity. Um, try and find a way that you can benefit them too. So the people that I interview that are you know, the really big guests, um, you know, a lot of them like the fact that I've got a lot of listeners. Now, some people won't in England don't even still really know what podcasts are. There's a lot of celebrities who are really big who won't go on a podcast because they don't know what a podcast is. So I've got to find some other way of offering them value. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll pay someone to do a keynote speech at one of our events. And then I'll do a podcast before then. So I've got that, um, you know, that equitability, that fair exchange that way. Um, Daley Thompson, who was a great interview on my podcast. Well, his uh, brother's 
daughter. What does that make her to him? I'm not very good with how the family works because in Peterborough everyone's just brothers and sisters and related. Should I have said that? That was a bit un-PC. Um, so, yeah, but Hayley, um, obviously her uncle is Daley Thompson. So, you know, that, you know, I'll give help Hayley a bit. She, she was great at setting it all up. She's a lovely person. She's, you know, got, got um, she's a great marketer and great at, at brand. And, and she made that happen. Uh, she was in um, one of, she was in the Disruptive Entrepreneur Group. So always keep your lookout. You know, you probably know someone who knows someone. You pro Thanks for everyone saying niece now. Yeah, at least you're tuning in. Um, so yeah, so why don't you ask people who know people? Because then it, because the person who knows the person is going to be easier introduction. All right, then eight is grow your following. So if you do one to seven, your followings will grow organically. Um, how can you increase them non-organically, exaggerate them? Well, of course, you could do Facebook ads. You could do joint ventures. Um, you could cross-promote, so I've kind of covered those already. Um, but don't underestimate the power of organic growth. One top influencer or, you know, one just your 15 minutes of fame or something you do unrelated in another area of your life could all of a sudden, bang, really increase your subscriptions and your likes. Every time I create a new asset like a book or a podcast or a social media platform or something, all the others get a little bit of a benefit of it because, you know, they're all interconnected in some way. Um, I'm, I've been doing a lot of radio since money's come out. I'll, I'll be doing a lot more. And then when the paperback comes out, I'll be doing a lot, lot, lot more. And so that'll boost all the profiles. And of course, my social media and profiles uh, mentioned in my book. So that helps. And then I sell more books when I mention life, leverage and money, my books on my social media platform. So they all boost each other. What is it they say? The, the rising tide lifts all ships. But here are some other things you can do too, because I know you like some hard hitting, practical, down and dirty tips. So you can ask for shares. There's nothing wrong with saying share if you think it's good or share if you think this could help someone. What you'll generally find is when you ask for shares, you get more shares. When you don't ask for shares, you don't get more shares. Don't ask for shares every two minutes and don't ask for shares for something that's not share worthy. But if it's a quote or something that you're doing to help people, you can ask for shares. The next thing is you can consider face, uh, boosting your posts. So on Facebook, you've got an ad, a sponsored ad, but you've got a boost where you can make a post and then you can boost it so more people can see it. So you could consider boosting your posts. You can link across platform, like I have said. You could use hashtags, um, you know, find hashtags. Um, on the right hand side of Facebook, so as you're looking, so it's probably, this is probably the right hand side as you're looking, there's all the trending stuff. So you can newsjack and you can um, think of an article that might newsjack a trend and then hashtag the trend because the trend will get seen a lot more in the feeds and therefore your articles and videos will be seen more. I must admit I'm not a major expert on hashtag and I mean my agent, researcher, outsourcer, general legend he, um, he puts all the hashtags in for me. Don't just lob it with 50 hashtags because it looks awful. It's got to look personal. Um, you can do that too. And then finally, and importantly, stay consistent. And I know I've messed that up from time to time. So I don't like people know when I'm going away just because, you know, I've got a lot to lose, I suppose. Um, and so I don't often post when I'm away. So sometimes there's these two-week gaps. Um, pretty good now being consistent, but I've got to up my game on Instagram. Uh, so, yeah, stay consistent because of that ultimately will build that momentum and compounding. Summary, and then I'll take a few quick questions. Get clear on how you want to be known. Number one, your vision, your values, what you stand for and against, what you could do for a long time. Number two, set up all the main media. The well-known ones, every time a new one comes out, just set, it, set up the schedule. Set up the platform, because if it doesn't go, turn into anything, if Snapchat doesn't go massive, at least you set up the platform. It doesn't cost you much to set up the platform. OK, post consistently is the, was the third one. Ask your audience what they want and give it to, uh, to them and interact with them was the fourth one. Repurpose your content multimedia was the fifth one. Test, 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 test. If in doubt, test. Just fucking do it was the sixth one. Seven, joint venture and... and um, uh, cross promote with top influencers and then the eighth one was continually to continually grow your uh, followings all right so richard has said schedule your post yes scheduling your post is good um if you use one of these aggregators like hootsuite it will say it at the top and it's not very personal and sometimes they can go a bit wrong um but you can now schedule in groups and you can schedule on your page 
And I think it's good to schedule a week or two in advance so that you don't forget to do some content. Um, so yeah, scheduling is a good thing. And it's really good that they've scheduled in groups now. Uh, Michael has said, you're well over 160 podcasts. How do you come up with the ideas for the content? Well, mostly as what I've discussed in this video on podcast is I interact with my community very closely so I can see their problems, pains and challenges because I'm reading about them. I'm answering their messages that they're sending me about them. So they're telling me what I need to solve and then I solve them. I also look at the problems I've sold in my business and, and um, you know, I've now grown through and has done well or some mistakes I made that I've now recovered from and I've sorted out and systemized or some things that went well in our business. You know, when you're doing the thing that you're teaching on a daily basis, basis it's pretty easy coffee really helps me uh, getting isolated from, so I make sure I don't have distractions and having a, a good zen aura around me I've got a few rooms in the house which are really conducive to having good ideas um, but yeah I I don't lack ideas sometimes I lack direction I don't lack ideas all right Richard has said be careful of your voice sounds like you're pushing too hard absolutely you are right after my world record public speeches uh, and then I did 250 speaking gigs in one year and nearly lost my voice. Yeah, I tend to shout. I should be like Barry White and speak from my mm, groin. Mm. All right, I have to be reminded to thumbs up a YouTube video, so asking is definitely recommended. It was funny because when I said give me a thumbs up or a smiley face or a heart if you're loving this so far, or give me an angry face if you're not, we had loads that came across. If I do it now, you know, give me a thumbs up if you've thought this is a good video. Give me a smiley face if you've thought it's a good video. Give me a heart if you love the sound of my voice. And give me an angry face if you think I'm a wanker. Uh, and you'll see in a minute, probably, a lot of them, but there you go, like clockwork, there they all go. There's nothing wrong with us. And also, you're not just asking for it for vanity, although keep the hearts coming. Come on, keep the hearts coming. Ladies, ladies, keep the hearts coming. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> you're not, it's, it's, it's interaction. If you get interaction, you get reach. If you get reach, you get more likes, comments, shares, followers. So, you know, because, because of the way the algorithm, algorithms work on the social media platforms. If things are being engaged quickly, they'll, it'll instantly give it more reach. And if it's not, it'll instantly give it less. All right, great. That's great. Thanks for all of that. Your podcast is called The Disruptive Entrepreneur. What does disruptive mean to you? Oh, look at you, Ben, bouncing my question back on me. So disruptive means innovate. It means disrupt yourself. It means never stay comfortable. It means always looking to grow, always looking to solve problems, never standing still, never taking anything for granted, never being complacent. It means having compassion, enthusiasm, energy, passion, drive. It means wanting to be an entrepreneur and make a difference and leave a legacy. Was that a good enough answer for you, Ben? All right, let's see if we've got any more. High six for all the people in Peterborough who have more than five fingers. I get your joke there. That's a nice one. Um, Sam, I've had some amazing interviewees. Thank you. Um, the great thing is when you get good interviewees, you get more good interviewees. So I'm always excited that I know that I've got even more good interviewees. Not that they're better than the others, but, you know, maybe in terms of size and scale as you get more good interviewees. So as you partner with interesting people, it's almost like you go up a ladder and you get seen and noticed by more interesting people. All right. OK, so Julie, I struggle with self-promotion. Doesn't feel natural. Mm, it's a good question because I don't think you're alone. And I'm, you know, like, well, it might seem like I'm comfortable with it. Uh, sometimes I, there are lengths I won't go to. No guns in the Ferrari. Um, no bikini clad women yet. You'll know if there's bikini clad women all over my cars. You'll know the social media is going very well for me. Uh, I don't like doing too many walk around selfie videos. I don't like doing selfie videos unless I feel I'm giving value. So a lot of people just do, hey, look at me, look at my dinner, look at my face, look at me, mwah, look at my Botox, look at me, mwah. you know, like I, there's all these celebrities and they're just doing that and they're, you know, everyone loves it. But I, I, I don't have the confidence in myself that people just want to follow me just because they're me, because I'm me, uh, you know, like. I, I, I think that's delusional. I think I, I want to give good value. So if you give good value, people will value you. And then as you see the feedback on that, they'll help you a bit more. But Julie, what you can do is you can pick your favorite medium first. So I can see, Julie, from your profile, you don't even have a picture of you on Facebook. And that might be because you don't want people to see. So you could write articles, you know, just write really good articles and that will get you well known. Or you could do audio. If you don't, you know, if, if maybe like me, you've got a face for radio, as they say, uh, then, you know, you could do... Audio, you can pick your favorite medium, get really good at that. Now, some really top influencers, they don't have a podcast or they don't even do Facebook. 
Um, you know, I know quite a few people I'd love to follow on Facebook. They don't even do Facebook. Damien Hurst, can't find him on Facebook. I so want to follow that guy. I just, you know, I wrote about him a lot in his story and money and I'd love to have him on the podcast. If anyone knows Damien Hurst or Damien, if you're watching, um, I just think your, your story is great. And I think you could help a lot of people on the balancing of art and money, you know, creativity and capitalism, you know, because they're, they're like, it's almost like they're set. People think people even call them separate parts of the brain. It's like they're two separate things, but they're not as, you know, Damien talks about a lot in his work as I talk about in money. Um, but he, uh, he doesn't have a Facebook page and don't, you don't see him being this like outrageous self promoter. Okay. He's pretty good promoting his art. So just use the platform you're comfortable with and then grow it from there. But I, I bet you, as you grow, you'll want to do it. So Nick, uh, Nicholas has said you should post your Richard Meal more. I know it will piss some people off, but it inspires some of us. Yeah, so, um, I mean, people accidentally see my watches when I, um, you know, move my arm. But, yeah, I mean, you know, that's... Or on... Oh, we're back. All right. So, uh, yeah, I just crashed it for a minute there. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, I don't want everyone to know how many watches I've got. I don't everyone want everyone to know what they're worth. I don't want everyone to know what I'm worth because that's going to attract the wrong kind of attention. I don't mind if people see it in situ. Um, but, you know, I suppose maybe, maybe I should be a bit more outrageous. I, I, there's certainly a lot of people that would advise me that, you know, I've, I've got the disruptive nature and I could really leverage that more and I could polarise people more and I could be more outrageous and I could do more, you know, check my bling and all this kind of stuff and I could fight, you know, copy what the top influencers do. But that word authentic, again, is really important. I, I do have a bit of that. I don't mind a bit of that. You know, like I don't mind wearing expensive clothes, expensive watches, giving it a bit of whatever you think I'm giving it a bit of because that's a part of my life. It's who I am. But I don't want it to be the focal point. I want the focal point to be the value, the content, the information that you can implement. So um, how come your phone never rings when you're on a live feed video? Because I never answer my phone and I always keep it on silent um, because that's how I've organized my life. If someone phones 17 times and leaves 15 messages, that's an emergency and I'll phone them. But it never does because I turn all the notifications off um, because I've taught the world that, we're, that I'll speak to the world between eight and nine. Um, just because if you've read Life Leverage, it's in the compartmentalizing your diary section. All right. So, wow, we're nearly an hour here. So I think I need to tune off now. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you've got any other questions, post them. I'll come back. Uh, it's a bit late for me now, but I'll probably come back tomorrow morning. And um, I can hear the dog going mad. Uh, I'll... Um, yeah, the dog going mad. I'll come and interact with you and engage with you. I'll answer some of your questions if you've got them. So keep them coming just because I haven't answered them in the video or on the audio. If you listen to the podcast, make sure you're in the Disruptive Entrepreneurs community. Also, if you thought this was in any way useful, give me one more thumbs up, one more heart, one more smiley face. And please go and review the podcast on iTunes or Stitcher. Um, we have 276 reviews now, which is great. The more we have, the more podcast subscribers we'll get. The more podcast subscribers I get, the more, the more reach I get, the more value it is to me to give you information. The more information you get, we all win. So I know sometimes it can be a bit of a drag to go on and, you know, give someone a review on Amazon or give someone a review on, um, you know, podcasts. But I don't ask any money for any of this personal brand stuff I do for you. Um, I, I, I probably never will. Obviously, you can join my company for property or public speaking or e-commerce courses or social media courses um, or any of my mentorships. But that's not why I do this. Um, but if, I, if there was one thing I would ask, other than when my foundation comes out to support that, it's please could you just go and give me a review wherever you could give me a review? Um, because it just it just helps us all. It creates this compounding compounding momentum. And I do count the reviews. I'm nearly a thousand on Life Leverage on Amazon and nearly a thousand on Audible, so nearly two thousand. So we're nine hundred and something. If you get me to a thousand on both of those, man, I'd run a competition. I'd probably give an iPad or a Mac away, or I'd give some crazy prize if we could get to um, a thousand on each, because that would just feel good. It's totally vain, yes. Ironic. I did a podcast called Beware of Vanity Metrics. That would be vain. But hey, we've all got some parts of us that are vain. Thanks for tuning in. And remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything.